All right, how's it going, guys? Uh, here we are with part two of building a Starship HUD with React and 3JS. Sorry about that. You may have heard some echo just a second ago. I forgot to turn off my desktop speakers, which is, you know, the most brilliant of things to do. Uh, anyways, let me see if I can pull up uh, what I want to see over here. Room. Alex. Great. Uh, cool. So you might notice some slight upgrades to our Starship thing here. Uh, I went ahead yesterday and I actually built, um, well, I didn't really build. I found a Starship cockpit uh, and loaded that in with 3JS and stuck it in the scene. Uh, I was trying to get it to be even fancier with, uh, you know, cool uh, physical base rendering, PBR and stuff, uh, but I couldn't get the maps that I had working the way that I expected them to. So I'm going to have to fiddle with that more later. Anyways, uh, it's still a whole lot cooler than it was. So uh, what's a little weird right now is that we're actually rendering two things with 3JS. Uh, we have a WebGL renderer running, which is rendering the cockpit. Uh, probably should have just taken a screenshot for that, but whatever. Uh, and then we have our CSS 3D renderer, which is rendering the, uh, the panels, which you can see down here. We've still got the red borders with the white backgrounds, and it's still just generating a bunch of random numbers. Um, I also... I did move the mic today, so hopefully you won't hear the jarring, uh, like, thudding that I found out was going on after I went back and rewatched the video from our live stream on Wednesday. So, uh, yeah, upgrades all the way around. Well, let's see. Because these are uh, viewport-based size sizes for the, uh, the panels, they're looking a little wonky when I resize my screen. Whenever they're nice and tiny, they fit in perfectly, but that's not uh, that's not exactly what we want. So I'm gonna fiddle with that for just a second and see if we can make those look a little better. Um, so I'm gonna start out by just getting, uh, let's see, let's just give them a static size of like 500 pixels wide and see what happens. Uh, save, just refresh and see if that updates it. Uh, oh, did I update the wrong thing? I totally did, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, so that is still supposed to be 100 VW. These are the things that I was trying to update. There we go. We want the panels. Okay, cool. So that's not that's not bad at all, actually. Um, let's crank up the height or the width just a little bit more. Maybe six hundred. Uh, Seven hundred. Yeah, that takes up pretty good space on the dash. Um, so this is overflowing, which is an issue, but I'm sure we can figure that out. I'm gonna refresh one more time, see if it just magically fixes scroll bar thing. No, nope, it doesn't. Okay. So we've got those in there. Uh, okay. So my best guess, actually, we're going to pop open the console and do some investigation with this. Um, okay. So those are our list items. We've got our react root is the right size. Our OL is really big, which is what we expect. React root left panel is the right size. That div is somewhere crazy, and I have no idea what that is. Um, 690 and height 449. That's weird. <laughs> uh, and it's just wrapping this thing. Weird. All right, well, oh, okay, so it's also being based, yeah, okay. So we're gonna update this to just 
and I think that'll fix it. Yeah, there we go. That was the issue. I had max height set to 100 VH, which is, uh, like I mentioned on the stream from Wednesday, uh, is viewport width, or viewport height. Uh, VH is viewport height, VW is viewport width. It was set to 100 VH, so it was trying to be as big as the total viewport, but that's actually way bigger than we need it because these guys have static heights and widths now. Um, now, I would rather than setting static sizes on these panels, I would rather uh, go in and adjust all of the, uh, the, the size values for the panels so that they fit, or I'm sorry, not the size values, the uh, position values based on uh, like how the scene is rendering. Uh, based, which is then based on how big the viewport is, but uh, I didn't get around to that before the stream, and I'd rather just get started on the stream. So uh, let's go ahead and start turning these into something that looks like what you would actually see in a starship, because that sounds like way better than sitting here and goofing around with uh, stuff that doesn't matter. So yeah, we've got our starship cockpit class in here, uh, which I actually did in a separate... Uh, pen, but I'm just going to fold that down for now. We've got our left panel, which is being rendered over here. Uh, so let's let's give it some, uh, some actual layout now. So we've got a uh, div to wrap it all. Let's put a header in there. And then let's put, uh, we'll give it a footer. This will probably re-render like a whole bunch of times while we're doing this. We'll copy this hello world heading into our header. Do, 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 do. Cool. And then, um, so here's an interesting conundrum uh, that I just thought of. I thought, okay, we've got a header, we've got a list. Why don't we put the list in a main tag and we can move from there, but here's the thing. A main tag semantically is only supposed to be uh, is only supposed to exist once on a page. You're not supposed to have one more than one main tag. Uh, however, we have more than one application. So, I guess if we were running these applications uh, individually, so one was uh, you know they were in iframes or something like that, then using a main tag would be okay. But because they are individually rendered but in the same page. That would be semantically incorrect, so we're not going to do that. Um, instead, we're going to do something that I really, really hate and just do a div class of content. Um, I hate this because it's just it's gross and it doesn't really make any sense. Like you're giving it a class of content, but um, if you were to come and look at this stuff with a screen reader, then it would just seem like it just sounds like a divider to a screen reader. It would say div uh, header he uh, heading one hello world exit header and a div and then ordered list and then exit div. And so the class of content tells it absolutely nothing. Now we could stick an aria role on here, which would actually be the best solution to fix it. But again, we're going to skip over that for now. Um, let's see. Let's see. Can I? Playing that great. Um, okay, so we have our ordered list in here. What other kind of things do we want to show off? Um, well, we're in the, we have our header and our content, so maybe we can do, uh, not a div, but a, a menu that we can use to uh, jump around inside of uh, our content section. So instead of putting that there, I'm actually gonna put it right here. Do, 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 uh, say, uh, I think it's type of toolbar. Let's check real quick. MDN menu element. Do, 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 yeah, experimental technology. It's not necessarily something that you should use a ton, but uh, for the most part, it's no big deal. Uh, type toolbar, and it's super semantic, so we're gonna stick with using that. Um, close those things. So we don't need them. Okay, type of toolbar. 
And then we're gonna set a list up in here. Uh, we'll just do a UL for now. Class, whoops. Um, actually, we'll say, let's see. Uh, well, let's let's think about what kind of things do we want to have in here. Uh, I'm thinking maybe a so the menu to the left could be uh, some buttons to jump around inside the interface, and the interface could be like I don't know. Let's look at our ship diagnostics and and something else like that. We'll just do ship diagnostics for now, but um, yeah. So we'll do a UL. Close that up, and then we'll create an li. Whoops. Okay, there we go. And then we'll create a button in here. Type button. You know, I don't think we actually need that. Okay, so we create a button. We'll say system diagnostics. Cool, so I can see that button over there. All right, this is not gonna work. We are gonna need to be able to see that panel a whole lot better. So, uh, let's see, what do we wanna do for that? We can move the camera, why not? Let's do some uh, fun stuff with camera movement. So we'll say on key down, Event, and then do another one for on key up. Cool, and we'll do a switch case or switch uh, event dot which. And what I'm doing right now is basically I'm setting up a capture uh, for uh, key presses so that we can actually move the camera around with like WASD keys. Uh, so case, I don't know what the numbers are right now, so we're just gonna stub it and then break and tab that in, cool. So on key down, and then we're gonna need to bind to those. So document.add event listener, um, key up. And then event. Oh no, we don't want to do that. We need this dot on key up. Yeah. We're gonna do the same thing for key down. Cool. So there's that. Uh, what do we want to do next? Oh, we need to. Uh, so again, like I talked about on Wednesday, when you're doing add event listener, you have a tendency. Uh, or you're gonna end up having to deal with context because these uh, functions are now going to be run outside of the context of our class. So what I like to do is come down here and bind them in the constructor. So if we say this dot uh, underscore on key down, make another one for on key up. All right, great. So what this doing, what this is doing, is uh, basically resetting the method of on key down for this class, uh, so that it's the same function, but it's now bound to the context of the class. So anytime the function is called inside of the class, this will equal uh, the class, right? The the instantiated version of this class or the instance of this class, I should say. All right, now we're gonna console.log event. And what that will do is, now that's reloaded, when we come over here, if I hit a button, we'll see our key downs. Uh, so I'm gonna use the key. Uh, this is not cross-browser compatible, I don't think, the key. Uh, there's some weirdness around it, but because I'm just doing this in CodePen and in Chrome, I don't really care. So we're gonna say event.key w and then we'll do a d 
S and W. Cool. So what we're gonna do in these is say this dot moving forward equals true. And now we'll do the same thing for all the others. So uh, so A is actually gonna be left and then D is gonna be right. S is gonna be backward. And then W is forward. Cool, and then we're going to just copy this right on over to on key up. And just flip it. Oops. Set all of these to false. Great, now, uh, what we'll do is in our render function, we'll do some magic stuff. Uh, let's see, where's our render function? <laughs> Rend getters right now, render, right here, cool. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is say this.camera.position. Um, let's see, dot, uh, oh no, there's some weirdness around this. I need to look at three docs. Uh, so the thing is <laughs> that the axes of the camera don't necessarily change as you uh, adjust the position of the, the camera, I think. Hang on, maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. Uh, let's just try it. Position dot x is what we'll say. Uh, if moving forward, this dot uh, we'll set a velocity down here too, real quick, just to be safe. Um, get velocity oh it's gonna be weird about my spacing for the moment that's okay uh, we're just gonna return like five and we'll adjust that as we need to uh, but that's essentially gonna be how uh, many of our arbitrary units of measurement the camera moves uh, each time we render. So we're going to say uh, camera position x plus equals this dot velocity, right? And so that'll say uh, basically whatever the current position x is, we will increase it by uh, the velocity. So we'll do it for moving forward and then moving backward. Again, uh, like I mentioned on Wednesday, if you're wondering why I'm uh, it seems like I'm arbitrarily putting some things above other things or below other things. Uh, I like to keep things in alphabetical order. So moving backward comes before moving forward. Um, this is just as arbitrary as like randomly sticking crap in the code, but uh, you know, it makes sense for me. So that's how I do it. Back, uh, we'll need the left. And then right. If I can get over there, here we go. Okay, cool. So moving forward and backward is gonna happen on the camera's Z axis. Moving left and right is gonna happen on the X axis. Moving left is gonna be negative on the X axis, or it's gonna subtract from the X axis. Moving right will add to it. Moving forward will subtract from the z-axis, I think. Uh, yeah, let's find out. Whoa, ho, ho, that's trippy because it's just the panels moving, but I can tell you why that is. That's because we're only doing this stuff in uh, the uh, Starship HUD class and not in the Starship Cockpit class. So if we want this stuff to work universally, we need to apply it to both things. So let's get extra weird. Um, all right. 
So we're gonna set this stuff up actually outside of our classes for now. One, two, three. Uh, I'll key up. Actually, I lied. We're not. We're gonna create a new class for movement controller. Great. And then our constructor. We'll call this dot underscore bind events, which will contain these guys. Okay, so there's that. Uh, we're gonna pop up here and grab the rest of these things. Here, so velocity. Yeah, we're gonna set our velocity getter on movement controller. I need to close our class up. That'd probably be a good idea. Um, okay, velocity. And what else do we need from here? We need the render stuff. Um, okay, so our camera is going to be just an arbitrary object. We're going to return well, this dot underscore camera or this dot underscore camera equals and then our default values, which are all going to be zero. So we're going to say, um, X zero, Y zero, and Z is also zero. All right, we're gonna get rid of the positions on these guys because I don't actually care yet. Um, actually, we're not gonna do this. What we're gonna do is, so we bind events, so we bind these guys and that's Right, we want to do that. Um, I'm copying some more stuff over. Uh, but rather than, uh, let's see, where am I at? Down here, okay. Sorry, I'm wandering a lot more today than I did on Wednesday, but uh, I think we're gonna pick up here in just a minute. All right, so uh, on key up and on key down, we're doing up here, uh, but what we're gonna, do is we're gonna accept a HUD and a cockpit, uh, or actually we're gonna accept um, just an array of uh, cameras? No, an array of classes. So we'll just call them objects for now. Uh, and we'll say, this dot objects equals objects and that way this objects array that we receive is always available inside of this class now uh we're gonna set up our on key down and on key up methods so let's copy those over oops too far those right here. I'm also going to go ahead and grab my my headers and stick them in here because it's getting long enough to be hard to read. So getters, public methods. And then private methods. Great. So there's that stuff. Um, we're setting this dot moving. Okay, great. Now what am I doing? 
I think at this point I can fold up my Starship HUD because down here, what we're gonna do is say let HUD equal that, let cockpit equal that, and we're gonna say new movement controller, and we'll pass in HUD, oh, an array of HUD and cockpit. Cool. So we've got these guys. And then what we'll do is in each of these render methods, or each of these render checks, I guess, we'll say this dot uh, objects dot for each. Actually, instead of looping over it a million times, we're just gonna loop over it once. This dot objects dot for each object. Okay, and we'll move this stuff into it. Oops. There we go. We're gonna change the this for the cameras to object because we can uh, access that from the the object that we're receiving, right? We pass in HUD, we pass in cockpit. So we loop over each of those and we say, if this uh, class believes that we're moving backward, then we'll change the position uh, Z on that object. Um, and feel free to pop in the chat with any questions uh, that you might have. I'm trying to, like I said, I'm trying not to wander uh, a whole lot, but I feel like I am. So if I am losing anybody, feel free to let me know. Okay, so we're doing that. Now we need to make sure that the render runs the way that we expect it to. So we're gonna set up a request animation frame loop. Runs this dot render. We're also going to need to make sure render is bound up here so we don't lose context. Okay, great. Let's see what happens. Nothing. All right, let's check our console and see if we've got any errors. Um, oh, we're not actually running render. We need to do that. It's kind of important. Oh, let's see. If I move forward, still nothing happens. Okay. Let's see why. Just uh, moving backward. Unkey down, unkey up. So we're binding events. That's happening. Okay, well, we're going to say, we're gonna get a lot of logging out of this, but I think it'll be worth it. Basically, I'm just gonna log out all of our possible movements in render and make sure that these values are what I expect them to be. Backward. Left. And right. Okay. We'll check this console. Oh, hey. Whoa, we've got movement in the cockpit. Well, that's happening. Woohoo! Oh, that's fun. Okay. But, oh no. Okay, I see what's going on. Uh, our velocity in our cockpit seems to be different than our velocity in our CSS 3D renderer with our panels. So we're going to need to figure out why that is. 
Um, and I'm pretty confident that it's going to be a difference between the camera settings or the render settings. So our camera in our HUD has a FAR of 10,000 units. And I think I changed the uh, FAR in our cockpit. So let's come down here and see. Um, no, that's 10,000 still. Okay. Hmm. Field of view is the same. I know that because I went through and made sure of it. Got a light. Loaders. Renderer should be fine. I'm just looking for any sort of code smells that would indicate why this is an issue. Um, I don't see any in the cockpit. Maybe in the HUD. Let's see. Um, just on the left panel. Yeah, it's not going to recreate anything, so that shouldn't be a problem. Oh, maybe it's just with how far out these things are set. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll bet it is because, yeah. Okay, so this is going to be something really weird. <laughs> uh, a, because the difference between the way the cockpit is set up and the way that the panels are set up is the cockpit is set... Uh, like basically it's, it's right on the, on top of the camera, right? So, uh, when we create it, I think we do, oh no, I'm in the HUD right now. Um, well, we can look at the HUD first. So in the HUD to get the panels to sit where I want them to set, uh, we, when we create the panels, we set their positions with the offsets and the rotations and those values are like an offset X of 1380 and offset Y, but this is the one that I really care about right now uh, because it's gonna be the easiest to diagnose is the offset Z of negative 3,500. So 3,500 arbitrary units from our face is where these uh, panels are being rendered. However, if we check out our cockpit, there we go. We will see that the Z for this guy, well, only one of those should be happening. Uh, but the Z for this guy is negative 75, which is a little bit smaller. <laughs> um, so I think We've got a few options. We could do some crazy calculations uh, for the difference between uh, our positioning in with the panels and our positioning with the cockpit and say, you know, uh, like, so we've got 35, negative 3,500 in the panels and 75 in the Z. So if we do 3,500 divided by 75, we'll get like 46.6 repeating. So if we did like 47, uh, then we could say in our movement controller, actually, yeah, let's just give this a shot and see if it works. I, I have zero confidence that it will. <laughs> but what I'm thinking is basically uh, when we move five units in the HUD, we move 47 units in or for every one unit we move in the HUD, we move 47 units in the cockpit. Other way around. 47 units in the HUD, one unit in the cockpit. Uh, so we're just gonna do this and make it two uh, specific things. So this dot HUD is gonna be HUD. And then uh, cockpit. Dot cockpit equals cockpit. Cool. And then down in our render, instead of looping through them, 
we will say, oh, we don't actually need this one anymore, or this logging anymore. We can tab these guys back out. Okay, cool. So we'll say HUD. Dot camera dot position dot z. It's going to be this dot velocity times forty seven, and that's not exact, but it ought to be all right. Um, and then cockpit, yeah. So then we'll basically do this for all of them. Let's say. X. Here we've got Z, but it's minus. And here we've got X minus. Up here we've got. No, that one's already done. So we now just delete these guys. All right. This might go crazy. I'm gonna warn you right now. Let's see what happens. Whoa! That's actually not awful. Um. We could probably turn this value down a lot. Uh, so let's actually say like HUD multiplier. Oh. That way we can adjust it just once. Instead of having to adjust it four times, we'll do like 40 and see what happens. Okay. No, I think we actually need to turn it down way farther. Let's do like 20 and see what happens. I'm just screwing around with random numbers at this point, but oh, that's not bad. Uh, okay, well anyways, uh, we can get up here at least so that we can see our, um, uh, our panels and then we can screw with actually giving things to sit where they're supposed to later. Um, okay, so oops. I'm gonna leave that be and then we're gonna add, um, we're gonna add some key binds. So we do R to move up and then F to move down. Uh, and that's just because I don't feel like dealing with uh, uh, modifier keys to use like control and space and such. So we're just going to do it this way. We'll just copy these guys over again and make them false. Great. And then down here in our render, same thing. Moving up. Is going to be positive on the y axis. Moving down is going to be negative on the y axis. Right? I may have gotten that backwards. Let's see. R. Well, that's not doing anything at all. <laughs> uh, but my other keys are still doing stuff. R and F. Move this stuff moving up and this stuff moving down. All right. Sorry, tech rats. I need to close you guys up for now. Can I mute? Mute. Perfect. Eight hours would be great. All right. Um, okay. So we're saying this stuff moving up. So we should set the position Y. To minus this dot velocity. We're saying case R moving up false. Up here we say case R moving up true. So theoretically, pressing R and F should work right now. <laughs> and look, there we go. But yeah, they're not. Why is that? Oh, okay, let's fold a bunch of things. We've got our left panel. Starship cockpit, Starship HUD, moving controller, that's what we care about. So we'll look at, so these are definitely working. That's, there's no doubt in my mind with that. But 
down here is where things are not doing what I expect them to. So this step moving up, we should be saying position y minus this dot velocity times HUD multiplier. So yeah, let's just add some logging in here for up and make sure that that's doing what I expect it to. Yeah, we're moving up. Great. Looks like around 60 frames per second is pretty cool. Okay. But it's not affecting this. So let's just check out our HUD camera position when we do this. Let's load our console back up. So it renders everything. There we go. Ah, oh, crap. I'm so excited. <laughs> I see an error and I'm like, yay, we found the issue. But no, no, that's just me being a crappy speller. Uh, let's try again. Okay, moving on up. So the Y is negative 100, but it's not changing. When I press the button, Y is negative 100. I'm wondering if that's something that I'm setting on accident inside of the HUD or the Starship or both. I'm betting that it probably is. So let's uh, let's just search for camera dot position dot y. Let's keep jumping around and see if we have anything popping up. That's still in our movement controller. Let's see. Let's take a closer look at our camera. So we don't set anything weird on that. Um, element, FOV, left panel. Yeah, that all looks fine. So let's scroll up here. We'll look into resize. That sets the camera aspect, but not its position. This doesn't do anything with the position. Uh, so that's scene dot add where we add the stuff. Okay, I see nothing in here that would uh, cause it not to go up and down. Moving up, true. Hmm. On key down, on key up. Well, how about this? I have one more idea. And that idea has to do with not actually moving our camera around at all. And instead, we will comment those out <laughs> and uh, just say react dom dot render uh oh i don't remember the syntax once again i've forgotten forgotten what it is uh no we do it down in the left panel getter we'll do yeah react dom dot render there we go so let's fold this guy back up there we go we don't have panel dot element so we'll say document dot query selector hash uh let's say render whoops i can container and that should render it right there cool so now it just 
sits there and takes up the whole freaking thing. Great. All right, that'll make it a lot easier. So what we're going to do is essentially just build our application like we would any other React application, but we're going to use it uh, just straight in the browser rather than doing it in our 3D environment. So let's do some fancy styling and make it look cool and stuff. Uh, one thing that I want to do, oh, well, first off, I want to make sure that we have panels here. Um, so left panel, does that have a panel class? It doesn't. Okay, let's make sure that it does. And then that way it'll get whatever styling we want panels to get, which is cool. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and add this guy up here. Oops. Box sizing, border box. And oh, it's closer. That doesn't quite get everything fitting into here. Not sure why it's not all fitting into here. Um, let's see, we've got these are our LIs. What is it? That is bigger. So React root. Oh no, render container. The whole thing, basically. <laughs> okay, so we'll just say render container get some max values, max height of 100%, and then max width of the same. And that's not quite gonna do it, so we'll do viewport width and viewport height. I think that maybe, no? Huh. Oh, well that's right. Let's see. Do we need to, uh, we probably need to set overflow on it as well. Auto, which will force it to scroll inside this guy. No. Okay, well, we're getting closer. We're not quite there. So we've got our panel, which should just be scrollable. Yeah, so we've got a scroll bar inside of our guy here. Let's see, if we just get rid of the border, what happens? No, that doesn't do it. Okay. I mean, I did not expect it to, but it was worth a shot. Um, okay, our render container has a max height and a max width of 100VH and 100VW. Body has the same thing. And body should also get overflow auto. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty confused as to why this is doing this. Could be a weird code pen thing, but I don't think so. React root. Just trying to compensate for those borders. Let's just hide those borders for now until we figure everything else out for sure. Um, okay, we've got data react root. <laughs> see. Now theoretically, <laughs> all of this should be contained, but we have these scroll bars for some reason. Oh, okay, well, I'm going to stop bothering with them because I feel like I'm wasting time at the moment, and I don't like doing that. So we'll just... <laughs> Wait a second, what? <laughs> now it's... Oh, gosh. Darn it. <laughs> well, we'll just leave those for now and kind of move on with our lives. Okay. So we've got our panel. Uh, let's uh, do, I'm actually gonna do a grid layout, which I haven't done yet. So let's learn together about CSS grids. I've done lots and lots of Flexbox, but I have not yet done 
uh, grids. Whoa, that looks really, really weird. <laughs> um, okay. Hmm. Maybe, maybe this is. Uh... Oh no! Never mind. We can do that. That should be simple. Repeat. Okay, what's the, the repeat is f probably for which one? Auto rows, auto columns, auto flow, column gap. You know what, we're just gonna stick with Flexbox because I know Flexbox. And I'll do a separate video on learning flex, uh, CSS grids because that seems like a really good idea. Okay, so panel, we're just gonna say display flex. Great, and then flex, oops, direction, column. Cool, and so now it looks like nothing has changed, which is pretty much what we want to have right now. So we've got our panel, uh, inside of our panel, I wanna say our header uh, should not ever shrink, flex, shrink, zero. All right, and then our content, right? All oh, right, because we've got menu. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this guy also inside of content. No, I'm not. I'm gonna see if I can do this the right way, the technically right way with Flexbox, which would be with 100%. And then up here, we'll say flex wrap. Wrap, cool, and then, okay, great. We'll say uh, menu, it's gonna be width, let's say like 20%. And then content width would be 80%. Let's see if we can make this work. Um, no, it's going to be a pain in the butt. Oh, right. So I have flex direction column right now. If we turn that off, we should get flex direction. Yeah, there we go. That's more of what I expected. Okay. So what's happening is we have uh, our header up here taking up the full width, right? So all of our other flex elements are going to wrap down underneath. So we've got our menu now taking up 20% of the space and our main content taking up the other 80. Or at least it's uh, trying to take up the other 80. It's probably not because I haven't told it to flex grow. Yeah, it's not. Um, so that's another thing is that I need to say class name. So it's actually content. I actually got the content class, I mean. Um, now, if we check it out, yeah, there we go. Now it's taking up that 80%. Woot! All right, so things are moving along. All right, let's make this look really, really cool. Uh, so I absolutely love the way that the uh, um, Elite Dangerous panels look. And so I did a project a while back called Turk, and it was supposed to be an IRC client. The main reason I was building it is so that I could have something that looked a lot like um, uh, Elite Dangerous for my Fuel Rats stuff, which I'm sure I'll mention another time someday. Uh, but anyways, let's see. Okay, cool. We're just short of an hour, so I'm going to do a bit of styling, make it look really sexy, and then uh, probably call it, but I'm gonna borrow some styles from Turk. So we had uh, some variables that are colors, and that's what I care about. Our orange is this guy. So we're gonna say uh, panel background color instead of being white is gonna be this orange color. Cool, but we're also gonna make it opaque. Now here's a really cool little tidbit about SAS that you might not know, is that in uh, regular CSS, 
this has to be an actual RGB value, so uh, 0 to 255 for red, green, and blue. And then uh, for RGBA, you have to have an alpha at the end. Well, in SAS, it'll take a hex value or just a string of a color name and convert it to that value for you. So I can say 0 0.5 here, and I'll actually get a slightly transparent, you know, a half transparency uh, background that matches that color for me. So, and just for good measure, I'm gonna set the background color on the main page to black so we can uh, do that. I actually do 1A, 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 just because it's slightly off black and it feels a little better most of the time. Um, okay, and then we've got our dark orange, which I'm not going to worry about right now. Cool. Okay, making progress. So we're going to go ahead and change that border to be uh, also this color. Uh, but we're going to make it a lot darker. Eight, and we'll make it a bit skinnier. So we'll do like four pixels border, which is, yeah, that looks fine. Cool. Uh, so there's a little bit of border. And I think all of the text in these things are usually white. So we'll do that. Okay. That looks pretty awful right now. <laughs> We've still got a little ways to go. Don't worry. We're going to get there. Uh, so I'm actually turn the opacity on this background down even a bit more. And then we're gonna get fancy. So let's give our panel padding. Let's do like two rems. If you're not familiar with rems, that's root M. Uh, so if you're familiar with M's at all, uh, it's the, uh, generally, it is the width of the lowercase M in whatever font you're dealing with. So uh, that's what an M is and then setting your m values will change your font sizes and whatever rems are just based on the root elements m size so whatever your pixel or your font size is set for your uh, your html tag that's what a rem will uh, be equivalent to so all right we've got this and we're going to say header we're going to give that guy some padding as well padding of one rem Maybe two rams, probably two rams. All right, and then we'll give it also a background color. Cool. We'll crank that up. So I want it to be a little bit more oh, opaque, Let's say 0.5. Um, okay, and we're gonna give it a margin bottom so that everything below it gets offset. Uh, to match the padding of the actual panels con panel container. Um, cool, so there's that. And then we're going to copy a lot of these styles for our uh, menu and content. So I'm gonna go ahead and menu, content. Cool, we're gonna copy most of these, I think. Um, let's see. Yeah, so that doesn't go with, uh, and the width doesn't go with, so we can get rid of that. So we can leave the width on here, get rid of the padding, get rid of the flex shrink, and get rid of the background color. And then down on the menu, we're going to add a margin right of like two rems. And that's going to cause our content to pop down like that. Uh, but no need to fear because CSS calc can do some nifty things for us. Uh, I would rather take this um, extra width out of the content than out of the menu. So what we're going to do is our width is going to be calc 80% minus two rems. And that accounts for the two rem margin that we have up here. And bam, everything has that nice uh, uniform gutter, which is what I was going for. Now, I'm also going to set content to 
tap overflow auto. And that will allow it to scroll if we get there. Um, but to make sure we get there, we need to tell the panel itself to say, uh, let's try overflow hidden. I don't think that'll quite do what we want, but it's gonna get closer. Uh, no, because this guy is still trying to escape. Um, so we'll say, oh, the flex shrink, that's our problem. So our flex shrink, we can, whoops, that's way more than I wanted to take. Uh, flex shrink can stay on header, but we don't actually want it on the rest of them. Mm, but that still didn't quite fix it. Let's see, what's uh, the next step I would take? We're just a little over an hour here. Um, okay, next step I would take. We've got these guys. Oh well, and our content. Content is way too big. Uh, React root is actually part of it. But where's our panel? There's our panel. So let's see. Well, our panel already has an overflow of hidden. What I want to do is make sure that things don't get any taller. Oh, do I need to explicitly tell content that it can shrink? Possibly. Uh, no, that didn't do it. Okay. Content has overflow auto. You said height to auto. I mean, height should default to auto, so I doubt this is going to do anything either. But we'll give it a try. Nope, still no luck. All right, what if we set, so we've got display flex. If we do a line content stretch, what will that do for us? No. Because uh, what we need is, oh, items maybe? Because we need it to stretch on the cross axis. <laughs> hmm. I know I've solved this problem like a million times before, and right now I'm just completely blinking on how. So, you know what? Here's what we're going to do is we're going to go check my code pen, where I'm pretty sure I've put together a pen where I've solved this problem. Um, Starship HUD pen, yeah, I don't care about that stuff. <laughs> Here's one version of it. Okay, so we've got, let's minimize our JS. So we've got our main tag. What kind of stuff do we have on the main? Flex grow, flex shrink, overflow, and padding. Huh, all right. Let's just copy that right on over, see what happens. I don't think that's gonna fix it, but we're gonna try it and see what happens. Just delete that stuff and copy our width over. Yeah, like I said, not quite. Um, okay, and we've got body has display flex and overflow auto. We've already done that for the panel, which is the parent element. 
which is where that would matter. Display flex, overflow. Oh, if we do hidden or do auto. Yeah, then it just tries to scroll, which is not what we want either. Mm -hmm. Get rid of that static height, then it just grows. Um, okay, well, I'm not going to bother with this too much anymore. Uh, let's see. What else do we want to do? I'm going to do... Uh, well, you know what? Let's let's take a look and see what it looks like inside of our CSS or our 3D environment right now. So instead of doing this, we'll just uncomment these. Whoops. Let's see what happens when we do. Oh, do we have an error? No, we just have a whole lot of stuff not working. Let's see. Is it because I set a background color on the body? Nope, it's not because of that. Let's see, cockpit and HUD should still have the sizes that they need. Body, render container. Oh no, because I changed stuff on render container. There we go. Woo -hoo -hoo, look at that. That actually looks pretty sweet. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, I am going to go ahead and call it then because I feel, you know, mostly successful. Uh, anyways, so we've got our panel in here. It looks vaguely reminiscent to what uh, the Elite Dangerous Starship HUDs look like. Um, I'm sure that we could make this a whole lot prettier, but for now, I'm pretty happy with where we're at. So, yeah, uh, like, rate, comment, subscribe uh, the channel, post any comments, let me know what, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like, anything that I could do to make it better. Um, I am probably, I mean, this was our sort of kickoff, our pilot stuff. Next, I'm going to start trying to do actual tutorials that are going to be really useful to more people than just me, uh, whereas this is more like useful to just me and maybe useful to people to get a look into like my problem solving uh, brain. I don't know. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching and I hope you come back soon.